You're on an analytics team and you have all these great ideas for how you can build out the platform, gather all of this great data, and deliver business-shattering predictions. The whole team is crushing it, working hard, producing like crazy, but your goals are always just out of reach. Next month, you'll get to them for sure, right? But you're being held back by the biggest enemy of software, technical debt. How do you break out of this cycle and actually get things done? Technical debt occurs as a result of trade-offs when developing and delivering software. Priorities will almost always result in taking certain actions now to finish with the need to clean things up later. Sometimes this is intentional, sometimes it's done without knowing it, and sometimes there's just no choice. You have to implement A before B, but once B is done, you'll have to return back to A to change something. There's healthy debt, which is thought out and planned for, and there's unhealthy debt, which is accidental or unknown. But either way, if it's not gonna be dealt with, it's going to be a problem. Everything that the engineers and analysts have to retain mentally, every process that needs manual steps, each additional layer needed to do their jobs efficiently, is gonna slow down progress. As the code base grows more complex, developers won't be able to predict all the downstream effects of the new changes. There'll be more bugs, more QA time, more mistakes, more, oh, if we change this one thing, we'll need to change these eight other things. And now you realize despite working harder than ever, your progress towards the bigger goals around it has ground to a halt. You're in maintenance mode. It's important to know the costs of tech debt so you can accurately explain why it's causing your output to drop. For engineers, it makes it more difficult to add new software value. Fixing problems is more challenging, working on code is a chore and demotivating, and turnover increases. For teams, velocity drops, more task ownership and less cross-functionality occurs, it's harder to plan, and there's lower morale. And for the organization, you have weaker portfolio management, reduced value stream, unreliable responsiveness, and friction between teams and groups. So why don't we just solve technical debt? The problem is usually the business doesn't care. They want fixes, enhancements, and new functionality. Refactoring isn't exciting to them. So it's important to speak the business language. Don't explain the technical side. Explain the cost of bad quality. Gather clear metrics of lost cost and time spent fixing quality issues. If you're tracking velocity, show its drop when quality issues arise. Track the number of bugs occurring and being fixed. Of course, these are usually the metrics scrum teams love to sweep under the rug to show how great the team is doing. Agile metrics should always be used to highlight pain points and get support to improve the team. If the team is manipulating them just to look good, you're probably in that low morale state. From there, it's time to stop using the term technical debt outside of the team. It sounds very technical. Reframe it as a need for continuous product health. If you don't invest in ongoing health maintenance, the product will die. That should be more clear to the non-technical decision makers. Now the common tech debt recommendations get a little bit iffy here because you have to consider what sort of team you have. Often people talk about convincing the product owner of the importance of refactoring the backlog items in place of user stories. This isn't easy. Product owners have a lot of commitments to users. There always seems to be some sort of immediate need that postpones the refactoring. You need to find a ongoing cadence, either setting aside a certain number of story points per sprint for refactoring tasks or alternating infrastructure fixing sprints with feature sprints. So you build something new one sprint and refactor things the next. Now this is a good approach if you're doing sprints with a well-defined backlog and an engaged product owner. But what if you're doing some sort of half break scrum or Kanban or just good old fashioned chaos? Your problem is probably less about convincing a product owner to consider technical debt and more just trying to stay afloat with a million screaming users demanding things left and right. I have a few different experiences. I once started at a job where I was responsible for something like 100 ETL jobs. About three things broke per day and I was pretty much hired just to fix them every day. Each time I fix something, I try to find the root cause and fix that too. I didn't realize I was cleaning up tech debt. I was just lazy and didn't want to fix the same thing every day. After about a year, we had maybe one error a month, if that. And instead of being a maintenance guy, I was freed up to build out new products. Another team I was on was a solid four engineer group. I had a great boss and after rapidly building out a bunch of pipelines and reports, she would give me a month and say, find problems and make things run better and I'd just go refactor things that annoyed us. It was great and let us keep a stable, reliable platform. On the other hand, I worked at a startup that did a ton of manual steps in their ETL and data processing, 
you'd start to work on a project and then you'd get sidelined for days trying to manually force data through a clunky process. And by the time you got back to your project, you'd have lost all momentum. Nothing ever got done and it was incredibly frustrating. I'd try to convince leadership that this was not a sustainable plan and they'd always just nod in agreement and then say, well, we really just need this data right now. We'll fix it before the next time for sure. And we never did, so I left. So no matter your situation, you have to make addressing technical debt an everyday practice. The more you get used to refactoring as you run into problems, the less debt you'll accrue. It will make deliveries slower, but that's the cost of making software. Yes, having a dedicated sprint or month or whatever just to fix things is nice, but that takes having good leadership, which you may or may not get. So focus on what you can control. Of course, in order to convince anybody to take tech debt seriously, you need to fully understand it. So check out this video next where I go into a little more detail about the types of debt and their cause.